3D printing is transforming the manufacturing process. The latest innovation involves creating replacement parts for the human body, a process mastered by my next guest, Scott DeFelice and his company. Now, Scott, this technology, of course, has evolved to the point where you can replace the human skull. Can you tell me how? 3D printing technology has really been around for a while. What's new is that there, we can now 3D print with materials that are mechanically appropriate and biocompatible that can be implanted in the body. For example, this is a, a typical cranial implant. You know how someone ends up with one of these is they may have some form of a trauma, a car accident, and they're literally missing a piece of their skull. And what we'll do is we'll start off with a CAT scan or an MRI, and then we'll be able to design an implant that specifically fits that that individual and this is what in fact we print and ultimately put in a box and ship to a hospital. Now how safe is it really to have one of these 3D implants live in your body versus a titanium alternative? The materials themselves are, are very safe. The product is called PEKK or polyether ketone ketone so it's a class of polymers that are known to be safe in the human body for quite a long time. What we do in the 3D printing process is we essentially grow the parts one layer at a time in a very pure environment so it's quite a safe and effective way to produce an implant. Now your company has made some great advances in terms of spinal cord long-term implantation. Can you tell me a little bit about that whole process? A business that we've been in for a long time is called uh, Spinal Fusion. So we'll provide a device that sits in between the vertebrae and, and eliminates the pain. Now with the advent of 3D printing, we could take our same material that we've been using in Spinal Fusion and 3D print the device. What that means is we, we can make it patient specific. For that individual patient, you're going to get the proper anatomical fit and that means that the implant is going to eliminate pain and be more comfortable for the patient in the long term and it's really essentially the best clinical outcome. Now wearable technology seems to be all the rage. Can you tell me how is this technology being incorporated into the healthcare sector? Great example of where we're heading with wearable tech is in our cranial prosthesis. So what we can do now with those implants is we can make them smart. So we can enable them to elute a drug directly into the brain. We can actually chip that implant ultimately in the future. And so they could provide neurostimulation. And we even actually see a future where we could create bandwidth out to other devices for people who want to control external devices directly from the brain because of their limited mobility. Can you give me an example of a condition that could be improved with such technology? If you're quadriplegic and you want to have mobility. Clearly now people can control external devices directly from their brain, but there is a problem in terms of managing that bandwidth out. And these types of devices that can stay permanently in close proximity to your brain will enable that. Now another key sector that's benefited from some of the technology you've developed, of course, is the aerospace industry. Can you tell me about some of the areas where you've been able to enhance development? 3D printing, what it really allows for is to make very lightweight, elegant structures. I mean, this sort of emulates nature's way of growing things. That's the power of 3D printing or additive manufacturing. And now we can take that basic capability of the technology and we can use a really strong lightweight material to make structures that are really elegant and lightweight. This means if you're making things that fly, you know, you want to make them as light as strong as possible. And ultimately what that does is takes weight off aircraft and other things that fly and it enables one to save energy, right? It's about sustainability and so this is a real tool that allows companies to develop systems, airplane, that are, are better and more efficient. In being able to make the process more efficient, do you think that you're able to save the aerospace industry millions of dollars potentially? Absolutely. We can take hundreds or thousands of pounds off airplanes. And when you think of the 30 to 40 year life of an aircraft, what that actually means in fuel savings on one single aircraft is in the millions of dollars. Fleets of aircraft, it's in the billions and billions of dollars. Very interesting to see how your technology is being incorporated. Thank you so much, Scott. Thank you.